My name is Pauline Rockman and I'm co-president of the Jewish Holocaust Centre. It's wonderful to have so many people coming together to commemorate United Nations Holocaust Remembrance Day, which the Jewish Holocaust Centre has marked annually since it was inaugurated over a decade ago. On this occasion and last year, we've been very pleased to join with our colleagues at the Jewish Community Council of Victoria to mark this commemoration. We now look to the Australian government to take up the baton and to make the commemoration a standard annual event Australia-wide. And given the state of the world today, commemorations of this nature indeed assume increasing importance. My brief this evening is to introduce Mr David Ritchie, a retired senior career officer who has held several ambassadorial postings the last of which to serve, was to serve as Australia's ambassador to the De Democratic Republic of Germany, where he was awarded, awarded the Order of Merit by the German government. In fact, that's where I first met David, and that was in Berlin in uh, 2014 at the German embassy in Berlin, and it was Anzac Day, and together with Sue Hampel, we were leading a group of Australian adults on, on a March of the Living program. We had some time in Berlin and he hosted us that morning. Mr Ritchie has been at the forefront of efforts in Australia to secure Australian membership with the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. He has led our country's observer delegation to overseas conferences, and those of us privileged to have served with him are fully appreciative of his unstinting dedication and commitment. I invite David to give us a brief account of the aims and work of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Thank you very much, Pauline, and uh, I, I well remember that occasion, and uh, Pauline and Suzanne were with us in the embassy, and uh, um, there was one particularly memorable spot when Pauline pointed out to me that uh, she had come to visit uh, the land on which her, her relatives uh, and grandfathers um, uh, house had been built, apartment building had been built. Um, it turned out to be just across the road from the embassy in Berlin. And uh, we went over and had a look at the, that area and then went round the corner from it and uh, um, uh, a colleague, a, a relative of Pauline's from, from Israel had brought her cello and we sat down and listened to a very sad piece of cello music right there in the middle of the Berlin traffic was a very poignant moment and very important. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, you, Pauline, and Suzanne, and of course, all the distinguished guests who are here today for uh, inviting me and giving me this opportunity. I've been told I've got 10 minutes. Ambassadors rarely can even clear their throats in 10 minutes, but I'll do my best. But I'd like to say something tonight about um, uh, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which is a very important uh, organisation. Um, I was a permanent representative to, the, to what we call IRA um, when I was in Berlin and uh, had, the, had the, the immense privilege of attending uh, as Australia's, the leader of Australia's delegation, um, uh, meetings of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance in Bucharest last year and sitting in on the working groups and, and looking at its work overall. Um, I was therefore able um, to meet uh, Australia's distinguished group of experts who uh, the government has nominated um, to, to work on various aspects and to attend the working group meetings. So I learnt a lot about IRA at first hand, uh, listening to what was going on. Australia has been an observer in IRA since 2015. That was a decision uh, to become an observer member, an observer of, at IRA uh, that was taken by Julie Bishop as foreign minister. And of course, it's an immensely welcome decision. Um, this has enabled us to take a slightly more formal role in IRA meetings. But I'd like to emphasize that we're still only an observer in the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. So we, we actually don't have a seat at the table um, even though uh, we have a lot to offer, as I'll point out. I was enormously impressed with IRA's work. It's really grown incredibly rapidly since its inception in 1998 uh, with Professor Yehuda Bauer as the father of the body, and it now encompasses 31 members and 11 observers, 
one of which is Australia. But as an organisation um, with, a, with a huge workload across a range of areas, uh, it's interesting to note, unlike most international and intergovernmental organisations, that it only has six permanent staff uh, who are based in Berlin. Um, so member countries and observer countries are required to take uh, quite a leading role in it. And it has a commensurate budget, so only a very small amount of money. Some countries, for example, the United States, the United Kingdom and several others, even have dedicated ambassadors for post-Holocaust issues who attend IRA meetings, uh, such is the importance that their governments attach to this. Um, I wonder whether that is food for thought for the future for Australia as well. IRA has, of course, had a very clear focus on remembering and commemorating the victims of the Holocaust, and it has done that excellently. But it's much more than that, with really minuscule by the standards of other intergovernmental organisations' resources. It provides a forum that not only looks back, but with great creativity looks forward. To listen to discussions about innovative and clever ways to improve education and communication on the Holocaust, and we're talking about some proposals that our experts have put forward to IRA today about clever ways of of bringing, of educating young people about the Holocaust. Um, it's outreach to young people in particular, the sharing of ideas and information about museums and other bodies like the Jewish uh, Holocaust Centre, the very active way, uh, discussion on ways of combating anti-Semitism and racism, and also the really tremendous work it is doing by identifying symptoms, solutions, and learning lessons from the com on the Holocaust on combating genocide. All of this, to my mind, points to an organisation that is a living one, with much to say in a world that is now almost 72 years on from the end of World War II. In short, IRA is a wonderfully relevant organisation today, bringing together experts like ours from a whole range of countries including from museums and commemorative sites and universities and schools and NGOs and community groups, the list just goes on. Our experts, they wouldn't want me to be saying it quite this publicly, are immensely highly regarded in this context. I have seen that myself firsthand. And of course, Australia has a huge amount to give to IRA, especially a particular responsibility as the country which welcomed the highest number of Holocaust survivors per capita outside Israel. But we are limited in what we can do by just being an observer in IRA. In my view, and, and as Pauline mentioned, I'm now retired, so I'm a private citizen again. In my view, we need to move now to full membership so that we can take our proper role in what has been a successful, creative and relevant intergovernmental organisation an organisation that is also in line with Australian values. I know for a fact that not only IRA, but also its members would very strongly welcome our, our becoming a full member. They told me this very directly when I was in Bucharest, including no lesser person than Professor Yehuda Bauer. The costs to us for doing so are extraordinarily modest, and the work of IRA and its members is just so important in today's world and it would mean that our experts and other representatives could take the sort of role in IRA that we should be taking. I asked Professor Bauer in Bucharest about his vision for the future of IRA. It's a very ambitious one, nothing less than welcoming any or all countries that want to join. We should be there now. IRA provides a worthy channel for Australia and other countries to take forward this important work and to pay tribute to the victims of the Holocaust, including the survivors, by learning the lessons from that awful crime and applying them to the world today. Thank you very much for inviting me tonight. Um, not only for coming today, I'd like to thank you for letting me come today uh, to this hugely significant commemoration, but also for doing me the honour of inviting me to say a few words about IRA, a body that I have come to respect and admire very greatly. Thank you very much indeed.